Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webcast on the Natural Resources Consultation Paper. My name is Edwin Ng, and I'm a principal at the IPSASB. The Natural Resources Consultation Paper was published by the IPSASB in May 2022, and is the first step in developing accounting and reporting guidance for natural resources in the public sector. This webcast will go through a summary of the proposals in the consultation paper and also talk about how constituents can submit their comments to the IPSASB for consideration. Before jumping into the technical proposals, it is important to set the stage and talk about why the IPSASB is doing this project. Natural resources are generally understood to be resources that exist without the actions of humankind. The IPSASB added the Natural Resources Project to its work program in response to strong support from constituents to address the accounting and reporting issues related to this topic. Specifically, in response to the IPSASB strategy consultation and preliminary outreach, constituents noted that there's currently a gap in the IPSASB's literature on natural resources. IPSAS currently includes some guidance on resources that have been subject to human intervention, such as agriculture or inventories, but there's currently no explicit guidance on the accounting for natural resources in their original state. The IPSASB also found that natural resources account for a significant portion of economic resources in certain jurisdictions. Some constituents noted that governments often lack the information on the monetary value of natural resources, and as a result, the rights to these natural resources are often granted without proper regard to the financial or environmental sustainability or intergenerational fairness. The reporting of natural resources could lead to information that can be used for better management of these resources, and this is especially helpful in resource-rich jurisdictions. Lastly, because of the growing concern for climate change, many governments and public sector entities are prioritizing sustainable management of the natural environment in the development of their policies. While this project does not directly address climate change or sustainability reporting, developing accounting guidance for natural resources will provide better information for decisions and policy making in these areas. So now that we've talked about why we're doing this project, Let's start talking about the technical proposals in the consultation paper. In the consultation paper, a natural resource is described as an item with the following attributes. The first attribute is that the item is a resource as described in the IPSASB's Conceptual Framework for General Purpose Financial Reporting by public sector entities. In the framework, a resource is described as an item that is capable of generating economic benefits or has service potential. The second attribute is that the item has to be naturally occurring. That is, it exists without the need for actions from humankind. And the final attribute is that the item is in its natural state, meaning that the item is not subject to human intervention. In general, human intervention is referring to actions which modify the quantity or quality of a natural resource. Specific examples of human intervention may include extraction of minerals, the treatment and processing of groundwater into drinking water, or the harvest of trees from an uncultivated forest. Based on preliminary outreach, rather than talking about all natural resources in general terms, the IPSASB decided to focus on specific examples of resources in this consultation paper, as shown on this slide. These resources are discussed in detail in chapters three to five of the consultation paper. The first example resource is subsoil resources. These are non-living natural items that occur within the earth. Examples of subsoil resources include ore such as minerals and metal deposits and fossil fuels such as petroleum, coal, and natural gas. 
The second focus area in the consultation paper is water in its natural state, which include water in seas, lakes, rivers, and underground aquifers. And it also includes unprocessed water that has been impounded or held in certain reservoirs. Lastly, the consultation paper focuses on living resources. And these are living organisms that are naturally occurring and in their natural state. Examples of these include uncultivated forests and wild animals. Chapters three to five also discuss when these resources are considered to be in their natural state. When these resources are no longer in their natural state, it is very likely that the resulting items will fall into the scope of an existing IPSAS. For example, subsoil resources which have been extracted or living resources which have been harvested are both likely to be accounted for as inventory under IPSAS 12. At a high level, the IFSASB reached a preliminary view that natural resources, which meet the asset recognition criteria as set out in their conceptual framework, should be recognized as assets in the general purpose financial statements. To be recognized as an asset, the following two criteria must be met. First, the item must meet the definition of an asset, which is a resource that is presently controlled by the entity as the result of a past event. The second criterion is that the item can be measured in a way that achieves the qualitative characteristics and takes account of constraints on information in the general purpose financial reports. The reference to qualitative characteristics is referring to the characteristics of information in the conceptual framework, which includes concepts such as relevance, faithful representation, and verifiability. The second criteria means that for something to be recognized in the financial statements, it is necessary to attach an appropriate monetary value to that item. Natural resources, which meet both of these criteria, are recognized as assets, and much of this consultation paper focuses on the issues surrounding whether these criteria can be met for subsoil resources, water, and living resources. Applying the general recognition and measurement principles from the conceptual framework, the FSASB has reached a number of preliminary views in this consultation paper. In total, there are actually 11 preliminary views and four specific matters for comments, and viewers are encouraged to fully read these in order to provide more wholesome feedback to the FSASB. This slide summarizes the key preliminary views on the recognition of the example resources as assets in the financial statements. Again, this is not a comprehensive list of the FSASB's preliminary views. It is merely a summary of the key views on whether the example resources can be recognized as assets. In general, the FSASB reached a preliminary view that it may be difficult to recognize subsoil resources as assets due to uncertainty over whether these resources meet the definition of an asset and uncertainty over their measurement. For water, the FSASB noted that it is unlikely that free-flowing water, such as water in seas, lakes, and rivers, could meet the definition of an asset. However, water that has been impounded in certain controlled reservoirs and canals, or possibly underground aquifers, could meet the definition of an asset. And in some cases, recognition of these bodies of waters as an asset may be possible if there is a feasible way to measure their value. And finally, for living resources, the Osasi reached the preliminary view that certain controlled living resources may meet the definition of an asset, and that recognition of these resources may be possible if they can be feasibly measured. Typically, the measurement of a living resource is feasible if it is held for financial capacity. However, some living resources are held for their operational capacity, such as for their contribution to biodiversity or for their ability to absorb carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. In these cases, it may be difficult to come up with an appropriate value using the current scientific know-how and the measurement techniques that are available. And therefore, for these living resources, it is unlikely that they can be recognized as an asset. 
Another issue that the FSASB considered is that in the private sector, there is already developed guidance and common practices on the accounting for activities relating to subsoil resources. So in addition to the preliminary views noted on the previous slide, the FSASB also reached a preliminary view that guidance should be developed based on existing private sector guidance in the following areas. The first is accounting for exploration and evaluation activities based on guidance from IFRS 6, exploration for and evaluation of mineral resources. And the second area is accounting for certain development costs based on the guidance in IFRIC 20, stripping costs in the production phase of a surface mine. In addition to the preliminary views on recognition and measurement of the example natural resources as an asset, the FSASB also preliminarily proposed a number of disclosures for both unrecognized and recognized natural resources. These proposals relate to both disclosures in the general purpose financial statements, as well as the presentation of information in the broader general purpose financial reports. And combined with the views on recognition and measurement, the analysis of how to account for and report a natural resource would follow the general approach as outlined in the flowchart on this slide. The first consideration is whether the natural resource meets the definition of an asset. If the item does not meet or is unlikely to meet the definition of an asset, then the item is not recognized. In this case, the entity should consider the proposed disclosures for unrecognized natural resources in the general purpose financial statements, as well as whether the resource should be discussed in the broader general purpose financial reports. If the natural resource does meet the definition of an asset, the next question is whether the resource can be measured. Natural resources which cannot or are unlikely to be measurable are not recognized as assets. Similar to the resources which are unlikely to meet the definition of an asset, for these resources, the entity should consider the proposed disclosures for unrecognized natural resources in the financial statements, as well as whether the resource should be discussed in the broader general purpose financial reports. And finally, for natural resources which meet the definition of an asset and are measurable, these resources are recognized in the general purpose financial statements. For these resources, the entity should consider the proposed disclosures for recognized natural resource assets, as well as whether these assets are relevant for discussion in the entity's broader general purpose financial reports. So that was a quick overview of the key proposals in the natural resources consultation paper. In terms of next steps, the deadline for receiving comments is on Monday, October 17th, 2022. The FSASB will consider all feedback and discuss responses at its public meetings after the comment period has ended. During the comment period, if SASB members are available to discuss the proposals with a wide range of parties. As noted earlier, this consultation paper includes a number of preliminary views and specific matters for comment covering a wide range of topics, including the proposed general description of natural resources and its application, the connection between the IPSASB's natural resources project and sustainability reporting, recognition and measurement of subsoil resources, water, and living resources, and disclosures in the general purpose financial statements, as well as presentation of information in the broader general purpose financial reports. Respondents may choose to provide comments on all preliminary views and specific matters for comments, or just a selected few as they see fit. The FSASB also welcomes comments on any other matters that respondents think should be considered in forming its views. Comments can be submitted electronically through the FSASB's website at www.ipsasb.org. Thank you for watching and I hope you have a great rest of your day.